All right, I think I'm going to get started since uh, you guys have been waiting for a few minutes and when the others join us, well, we'll be merrily on our way. Um, a quick introduction, I'm Eddie Rodriguez. I'm a senior uh, a partner and consultant with the Franchise Consulting Company. Um, my own company here in Miami is called The Franchise Tailor. You add a dot com, you can see the website. Um, today, I want to talk to you guys about an interesting subject that I've lived through, like all of us have, um, over the last very tough year plus. Um, but the subject matter today is really franchising versus entrepreneurship in the age of COVID. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm really excited. I've got my two shots, and hopefully we can put this pandemic behind us. But a lot of things happened in the business world during the pandemic and right now what we're seeing with trends. For those of you that don't know much about franchising, a real quick tutorial, franchises are nothing but businesses. The difference being is they're regulated by the Federal Trade Commission, which is an important factor for you because you can count on a very thorough and honest discovery before you make any decisions. The other difference is a big one. And during the pandemic, these numbers probably got exacerbated. If you start an entrepreneurial venture from scratch, only about 17% of those new businesses still exist just two years later. Franchises that are started today are still around 10 years later, over 80% of them. That's a very stark difference. And the reason being is that franchises are established brands, they're established businesses, they're already proof of <coughs> concept. You can validate these businesses with um, other owners, you can talk to them. There is a support mechanism um, for you to tap into. So that gives you a general feel for how franchising works. Um, we're gonna dive into the, the, the subject matter today, which is um, entrepreneurship versus franchising in the age of COVID. I'm gonna share with all of you guys. I'm gonna share with all of you guys at this point, um, a PowerPoint that's gonna walk you through a, a very simple process of what I'm gonna be discussing with you today, okay? So uh, we'll start mm -hmm. with the fact that I'm associated, mm -hmm. affiliated. Mm -hmm. Somebody's mm -hmm. not muted. If you guys would be kind enough to mute yourself, mm -hmm. that would be great. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am associated, affiliated with the franchise consulting company. We're a big mm -hmm. um, Globally, there's over 140 partners and consultants. Mm -hmm. around the world. Um, and I'll start with this. Mm -hmm. which I think is an interesting one. There are who it is that refuse to unmute themselves. Jim is in there. Zevkim yok, yoruldum Attila. Her gün o arke, arkeye gidiyorum. Hani bir kedi gibi. Bu da kız var. Bunu kapat I can't see who it is, but you please mute yourself. Last year, obviously, many people dealt with the severity of the pandemic, whether it was health reasons or business reasons. There was obviously a huge downturn in the economy. And what occurred is I had my busiest year ever helping people identify new career opportunities via franchising. I'm showing you a couple of images here because it's not just food. I'm highlighting some here. But for example, McDonald's pivoted and toyed with changing their iconic brand. We all had to socially distance. So they started socially distancing um, even their logo, which was, I thought, a very interesting pivot. During COVID, and actually still today, there were a lot of small businesses that really did tremendously well. 
really well. I'm sharing with you some of these here. Simple essential businesses, cleaning businesses, home cleaning businesses, businesses and hospitals needed to COVID cleanse their facilities. Liquor and wine, obviously people are very stressed out last year. So if you own the liquor or wine franchise or owned a liquor or wine store, you probably did very well. Meal prep deliveries did tremendously well. Home restoration services or business restoration services. If your business or home gets flooded or there's a fire or damage is done, you have to repair that. You can't live with that in your home. So those businesses really flourished during COVID and still are today. You can see some of the others here, like landscaping, even bread baking, believe it or not, non-medical home care, where there was a lot of senior care that had to be addressed because of what happened with assisted living facilities and nursing homes, fitness equipment, an interesting one. Couldn't go to a gym, so what did people do? They got online and bought their own fitness equipment. This gives you an example of a couple of those businesses that did extremely well during COVID and continue to do so today. This is something that I learned and did a lot of research uh, last year. Um, in business, franchising and otherwise, innovation is critically important. These are examples of businesses that during COVID didn't stand pat and just you know applied for their PPP loans. They pivoted. For example, this New York-based Kolkata Chai business started selling chai kits online. They saw a huge uptake. They also upped their digital marketing. And so they reached out to a completely new audience rather than just focus on brick and mortar. The hair salon that you see here started selling T-zone kits, self hair dye packages for their customers who can't go see their stylist to get their hairs done. So clever, simple, their business went up about 70% during the pandemic. So my question with candidates, when I talk to you to try to help you identify what might be right for you, is how can you focus your expertise, your skill set, and experience and passion and use those tools that you have to delight not only yourself, but your customers, your new business, even whatever you're doing with your career. Innovation is critical. Nourishing is in franchise very important. Even though they're established businesses, I've had clients that think that you buy a franchise and all you have to do is flip the light switch on your new business and boom, you're gonna be successful. Very incorrect. When you own your franchise business locally, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. But it is your business wherever you live. If you don't nourish it, it won't work. <clears throat> for example, I've, I've given you <coughs> some examples here of businesses that nourished their business during the pandemic. LA-based Boy Smells, during their down, uh, downtime, they grew their social media to an exorbitant degree and their direct-to-consumer pivot now, where it was only 20% of their business before, is now about 75% of their business. So the lessons we can all learn, whether you start your own business from scratch or a franchise business, is don't shrink, pivot, think, how do I nourish my business? How do I reach a new market? Whether it's all the tools available to us with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, once the pandemic is truly behind us, there's going to be a lot of pent up demand from customers who now you have developed. So it's all about your customer database. So what lessons can you adapt in your business? franchise or otherwise. Um, there are a lot of businesses that I helped turn into a national brand by becoming a franchise. They were nervous. How do I grow my business? When this is over, what do I do? I'd love to be a national brand. When you turn your local successful business into a national brand, you leverage human capital and financial capital, others, 
human and financial capital to grow your brand. Because you get new owners around the country, all of a sudden, you truly become a national brand. The equity in the business you've worked so hard to build locally now gains tremendously and you get a lot of passive income because as a franchisor, you get royalty checks from those new owners that are building your business in other markets. So the economic downturn forced a lot of people to get creative about funding i.e. instead of using their own money to grow, they turned their business into a franchise and used others. When millions got laid off, many decided to start a business and chose to go with a franchise. So they benefited from that. Excuse me, I'm seeing some questions in the chat. Let's see. Thank you. We will get to the questions um, as soon as I'm done, which is not going to be too much longer. Um, it takes usually, just to let you guys know, from start of conversations to your business being a franchise, it is a legal process. Usually it takes about anywhere between six to eight weeks. So if you're considering exploring turning your business into a franchise, as I, you know, creatively illustrate here, turn your lemons into great orange juice, turn your business into a national brand, but you have to have a franchise disclosure document, systems manuals, operating manuals. You are going to be regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. There are experts like people like me and people in our company that can help you do that. Don't go it alone turning your business into a franchise. This is a general philosophy that I share with my clients about franchising or otherwise. Um, I actually looked la at last year as an opportunity to help more people. Millions of people um, were laid off. Many of them in an age group that struggled to find new work. Age and sex discrimination starts nowadays in corporate America at 47 years old. So if you're 50 and older and looking for senior level employment in corporate America, I can send you tons of independent articles. That's not a good path. So franchising becomes a viable option for people that are used to corporate America because you have the best of both worlds. You have a franchise partner to help you and support you in the growth of your own business, but then you control your own destiny and you have financial independence and freedom by owning and building your own business locally. So when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and get scared, others build windmills. Here's just a simple example of entrepreneurship versus franchising. Martinizing dry cleaning is a national brand. A couple of guys started a dry cleaners like the image on the right that you see on the screen. If you have a local dry cleaner, you could be very successful, but you're going to have a cap on how much money you can make. Martinizing dry cleaning has become a huge business from a couple of guys in one city to an international brand. So franchising allows you to start a new business with an engine that's already successfully built by somebody else. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You open with an established system with an established product, an established service. They give you a template to succeed. If you follow the template and you work smart, most likely, that's why 80% of them are still in business 10 years after they open, you will be successful. The franchisor has already made all the mistakes and learned from them. You don't have to. They're there to help you when you hit obstacles. So. My last point on this is one that I always highlight. The most successful franchise owners in America are military veterans. The reason being is they have a strong work ethic and they were trained to follow a system. Follow a system or you might die. With franchise systems, if you want to change everything and do everything on your own, do not consider franchising. It won't work for you. Here's the difference, franchising versus an entrepreneurial startup. I wanna open up a coffee shop where I am based in Miami, 
versus buying a franchise. You own a franchise, you work within a community of owners that offers support and experience above and beyond the franchise company and a toll-free call center that you can call for any kind of support you need. IT, marketing, staffing needs, whatever you need. The franchisor is motivated. It's a great partnership to help you succeed as they have skin in the game. Because if you do more business, the royalties that you have to pay them or pay yourself, if you're the franchisor, the owner, then everyone's happy. You're doing more business as the franchisee. The franchisee is happy because you're paying them more royalties based on sales. It's a good link of a partnership, similar end objectives. Financing a new franchise is easier than a new startup. Why? Lenders don't like people that walk into a conversation with, I have a great idea. They don't like lending on great ideas. What they do like is going to the SBA registry and finding, oh, this franchise brand exists. They're approved by the SBA registry. They're established or successful with 80 locations around the country. Let's talk. I think we can help finance your new franchise. Much easier to finance a new franchise business than a new startup. You definitely have more freedom with your startup. And if that's what you want, complete freedom, then you have to do your own thing, encounter your own obstacles and find your own solutions. With a franchise, they're there to help you overcome those obstacles. Here's a critical one. How do I choose the right franchise for me? If you go online and Google franchising, I guarantee you it'll give you a migraine headache. It is a huge industry. Um, I have a cousin that bought mistakenly a yogurt franchise years ago without doing his proper due diligence and more importantly, working with a franchise expert like me who can help you understand what are your lifestyle goals? What are your financial goals? What are you passionate about? Let me do a real analysis in, about your market. We know what franchises are trending. Do your return on investment analysis. So before you consider even exploring buying a franchise, A, you've got to start with some self-reflection. What is it that you value and why? What are your short and long-term goals? Is it a work-life balance? Do you want to spend more time with your family? Do you want to be a semi-absentee owner? There's lots of great franchises that quite honestly, you don't need to be there full time. There's a manager that reports to you. What kind of revenue are you interested in earning? What is your life passion? Do you want to transfer and channel your skill sets and life experiences into a new business that you've always dreamed about? What will make you, the last point here, I always advise my clients, after doing all your analysis, what's gonna make you really excited to get out of bed every morning to build your new business. That's the critical one. Franchise opportunities are not just in food. They come in all shapes and sizes. Our group represents over 200 brands in any industry you can possibly imagine. There are thousands to choose from. If you do the research on your own, it is daunting. So do yourselves a favor. Franchise consultants like myself do not charge you a fee. We're a results-based service where if and when you choose to pursue a franchise opportunity, much like a realtor, the franchise company pays our group a referral fee, you don't, but you do reap the benefits of working with certified franchise experts. It is essential that you do that. Find an experienced franchise consultant to help you navigate these vast waters of franchising. A good one will help you understand whether franchising is right for you or not, I oftentimes tell clients, you know what, after getting to know you, Bob or Bill or Wendy, um, I'm not sure franchising is right for you or not. So make sure that you pick a good franchise consultant. Validate the franchise by seeking with speaking with other current owners. Another beauty, if you buy a local business, you have to trust that that local business owner is gonna be very honest with you about the numbers, the history, when you buy a franchise, you get to talk to other owners before you invest $1 of your hard-earned money. That's a huge benefit to franchise ownership. Speak to them. Ask them, would you do this again? Has it worked for you? What are the obstacles? That is step three. 
And how do you choose the right franchise? Step four is the money. Now you determine that franchise of your dreams. You know what you want to do. You must seek the counsel of franchise financing experts, franchise lawyer, get an accountant to set you up properly. We provide all those pro bono services just as a professional courtesy to our clients. Make sure you work with somebody that does the same, that can help you do a review of the franchise disclosure document and other legal documents. You must quantify your funds and any financing needs. You must do a cost of capital analysis. Most businesses, startups or franchises fail, like that 17% of, of, of franchises that only 17 are in business two years later because of insufficient capital. They didn't do their financial homework from the get-go. Make sure that you do. We can help you. So you must secure proper financing, not only to buy and operate your shiny new business, but also to help you with working capital and give you enough time to ramp up your business. I refer to this as the follow the steps across the river. Follow the steps across the river is important because you wanna get from one side to the other. Make sure you tread lightly. Make sure that first stone is very sturdy. And once it is, go to the second stone. Do your homework with franchise exploration. If you work with the right franchise consultant, they will not rush you. Most of the time, I'm the guy that tells my clients to slow down. Make sure you do all your homework and get to that fourth stone safely so you can cross the river. If you follow the process properly, lots of franchise owners are making a lot of money today. And I'll end this with me. Essentially what I do is I educate people, whether they want to ex about exploring franchising or becoming a franchise with their uh, uh, existing business. I already explained to you how we make money, just in case that's the question. Um, this is my contact information uh, and my phone number. And now I really wanna open this up for any questions that any of you may have. Um, and I thank you for listening to, to what I've had to say. Any questions? I think we have a few questions here. We have a question from Wendy, the food industry, brick and mortar, it wasn't viable really during the pandemic um, for obvious reasons. We see a lot of pent up demand, Wendy, in brick and mortar businesses now. People that are, are now vaccinated, they're dying to go to a restaurant. Many are dying to get back in a gym. I have a bad back. I can't wait to get back into a regular routine of getting my masseuse to give me a great massage to feel better. So the answer to your question is, we see as the country opens up, an opening up of brick and mortar franchise opportunities. Are there specific brands that you think represent a great value at this time? Bill, I, I, I do know many brands that represent a great value at this time. Many with high net gross margins, net margins, and a very clever, what I call, trending value business model. So feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to schedule a time with you so we can discuss it in detail. I'm gonna you know, put in the chat here for all of you, um, my webs, my email and my phone number. Anyone wanna reach out to me, please do so. Um, it's an exciting time in franchising. There are a lot of amazing opportunities um, in all sorts of industries. If you're a sports lover, we have great sports franchises. If you love doing marketing, we have marketing franchises. If you want to open up a great new organic food restaurant that's you know more quick service, um, there are opportunities in every potential industry you can imagine. 
Um, anyways, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I hope that you've learned something of value today. I'm here to help. I literally educate people thoroughly when we start talking about um, franchises so that people can clearly understand what you're considering. And then I do a comprehensive review of what you wanna do, what might be a good fit for you, what you would be passionate about. I tell people about funding, costs, trends, um, so you will be very, very educated. Most of the time, I've been doing this for many years now. My clients really enjoy the process and I turn people into pseudo franchise experts by the time they're done working with me. So Bill, yeah, trending value standouts that I'd be interested to learn about. Bill, in the chat is all my contact information. I'd love to talk to you, you know, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So. Rifle me an email, feel free to call me at the number in the chat and we can schedule a time to, to go over whatever questions you may have. The replay of this, by the way, is coming out tomorrow via email to all of you guys. So if you missed something, if I talked a little too fast, even though I live and work with my beautiful family here in Miami, Florida, I lived in New York for 20 years. I have been accused of talking too fast. So if you missed anything, uh, you will get an email with the replay of what we went through today. Um, and as I said, if any of you have any more questions now or want to reach out to me individually, please do so. Um, I don't rush anybody. I'm very thorough. There are no bad questions. Um, I like to listen to people and one of the fringe benefits at this stage of, of my career that I get is getting handwritten notes a year after people have launched their new franchise business, thanking me for their new financial independence, financial freedom. They're controlling their own destiny. They don't have to count on the company for, you know, ensuring their, their financial wherewithal. So, um, if you want to explore it, remember, there's no fee for my service. If any of you have a business that you want to explore franchising nationally or internationally, reach out to me as well. We'll give it another couple of minutes just in case there's any other questions and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Again, thank you for your attention. My website is very thorough if you want to learn a lot more about my process about franchising, there's a biography of me. Please go to thefranchisetailor.com. You're going to get a lot of more information there than, than what we discussed today. But I hope I cleverly explain to you and succinctly the difference between starting your own business, entrepreneurship, and franchise ownership today. All right, I think everyone's done with their questions. I wanna thank all of you for attending today. Thank you very much. I look forward to helping some of you with you know, whatever new career steps you are thinking of exploring. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the week and weekend and stay safe. Bye-bye.